morning, everyone. Welcome to the 2020 New Balance Falmouth Road Race at Home Edition Wheelchair Event presented by Spalding Rehabilitation Cape Cod. My name is Sherry Blauett. I am here with my co-host Craig Blanchett, as well as over 40 wheelchair participants from 14 states and six countries around the world. Today, we're going to discuss the basics of wheelchair racing, the history of wheelchair racing in Falmouth, talk with our participants and accompany them as they push the Falmouth course virtually. Yes, don't forget uh, to ask us questions. Uh, you can comment on our Facebook Live, which we are now, if uh, many of you are watching this live stream from the Falmouth Road Race Facebook page. So you can make comments there to us and we'll get those re relayed over to us to possibly even answer some of your questions there. Uh, any questions you have about wheelchair racing, uh, questions you have about the actual equipment that we use as part of wheelchair racing, the athletes, history, things like that. Uh, be happy to field your questions there. At the conclusion of the event, we'll be giving away raffle prizes to our wheelchair participants with several gift cards um, to How I Roll Sports, which is an online store that has equipment for adaptive athletes, as well as a VIP Falmouth Road Race experience for one lucky winner. This VIP package includes a guaranteed entry into the wheelchair division, wheelchair division during the next live race. That's a three night hotel stay in Falmouth, travel reimbursement of up to $750 and VIP finish line tent tickets, VIP post-race party tickets and the $50 gift card to the Falmouth restaurant. Awesome, thanks, Craig. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd like to take a moment to introduce Stephanie Naldoni, who is the Vice President of Hospital Operations of Spalding Rehab Cape Cod. Um, nothing that we do is possible without our sponsors. Um, and we'd like to hear from Stephanie for just a few minutes to talk a little bit of, on behalf of Spalding about their sponsorship of the wheelchair division. Thanks, Stephanie. <laughs> Oh, I'm so, so excited to be here and to see all of you this morning. It sure is different, but it's still really awesome. Um, so I want to welcome you all officially, both athletes and spectators. On behalf of Spalding Rehab Cape Cod and the Spalding Rehab Network, I applaud you all for competing in this historic road race and look forward to it being live and in person next summer. Um, it's a bit of a cliche, but to say we're facing unprecedented times because of COVID-19, it's so very true. It's also true that hospitals and many others have met that challenge with amazing creativity, resilience, and energy. And by going virtual, the New Balance Falmouth Road Race has done exactly that. They've preserved and added to the 46 year history of wheelchair racing. This looks a little different. This feels very significant at this moment when we need reasons to celebrate human grit and achievement, and it honors the tradition that create community. In this case, by bringing together a diverse group of athletes around a love of sport, Spalding is so proud to be the sponsor of the Wheelchair at Home Edition. Our mission at Spalding is to empower persons facing illness and injury to live as fully and passionately as possible. Our ever-growing adaptive sports programs help many return to or discover the benefits of exercise and sport, which you all know so well. It's a special pleasure that this race will be hosted by one of our own, Dr. Sherry Blauett, a Paralympic and marathon champion whose current life touches all aspects of our admission, advanced rehab care, research, education, and advocacy. I'm sure each of you has a story to tell. You're some of the most accomplished athletes in the world. By being part of today's race, you're sending a powerful message and sharing your story. And maybe through this virtual medium, a whole new audience will learn about this sport and be inspired by your determination and athleticism. Thank you all and have a great race and I'll put my camera off too so I can enjoy it and watch you all and, and uh, enjoy. Thank you. Thanks, Stephanie. All right, so Craig and I wanted to take a little bit to talk to our audience about the basics of wheelchair racing. I think many people out there have uh, potentially seen a wheelchair racer whiz by on the course of Falmouth, of course, or other major events across the country. Um, and a lot of people have questions about the sport of wheelchair racing. What is it? How does it work? What is the equipment like? Uh, so we're gonna talk a little bit about that just to provide a high level overview and, and to uh, hopefully pique the interest of some folks out there who may wanna give it a try into the future. Mm -hmm. Craig, do you wanna talk a little bit about the chair? 
Yeah, a little bit. You know, initially, uh, at one point, the the racing chairs all started off with four wheels, and um, and then they progressed um, to three wheels. And so, uh, oddly enough, with the three wheel design, they're more stable. Um, they are lighter. Uh, there's a number of benefits to have in the three wheels versus the four wheels. And so you can see is this picture here. Uh, this is made by uh, uh, one of the best uh, wheelchair man racing wheelchair manufacturing companies in the world. It's been around for a long time, stood the test of time top end and uh, by Invicare. And I know um, this particular design here, a couple things that you might see if you're not uh, super familiar with wheelchair racing is uh, there's a, uh, the, of course, the front wheels out front. That's where the the braking um, happens. So uh, usually with um, brakes in a wheelchair are for controlled descent. They're not necessarily meant to stop you on a dime, um, and so they're for controlling your speed at different times in the race. And and that you can actually steer with the front wheel as well. There's a that black lever that comes off of the front front wheel. There's a steering lever there with a brake handle and some other some other functions up front. And that is able to steer you when you're coasting. Uh, of course, because we're on wheels, we coast, and uh, that's pretty a pretty good. Um, it's a pretty nice feature of uh, of wheelchair racing. Um, the way that we propel the wheelchairs on the back wheels, they say Karima on them. That's those big wheels in the back. They're about halfway down, you see a little ring that goes around there. That ring, we call that a hand rim. And the hand rim is where you propel the wheelchair with your hands. And usually that's coated with some type of a rubber surface. Um, and so your your hand with a special glove contacts that and pushes and uh, that's how you propel propel the wheelchair yeah and you may wait, folks may also notice the um people always ask well why is that one wheel way out front um i think common question from spectators um the one wheel out front really has how is how the design of racing wheelchairs has evolved over time um, as Craig indicated, these chairs initially evolved out of a standard wheelchair and people were in their garage welding, doing their own work to try to evolve a standard wheelchair into something that could go faster, roll faster, be pushed faster. And over several decades, as athletes and companies continued to innovate, this is the design that evolved. The one wheel is um, further in the front of the chair because it reduces rolling resistance. It lets the chair go faster. It ensures that if an athlete hits a tiny bump on the road or on the course, that they don't pitch forward. Um, so it gives it better stability as well. This is a picture of a roller. And so of course, many of our athletes come from parts of the world where it may not be possible to train outdoors year round. Um, many on this call, in fact, for example, there's a large wheelchair racing program um, at the University of Illinois. It's cold, Illinois, for, in Illinois for much of the year. So an indoor training mechanism is essential. Um, these rollers really um, mimic the, um, mimic the uh, act of pushing the chair. Uh, you'll see that the, the back wheels are mounted on a cylinder that has fairly low rolling resistance, although you can adjust the resistance in some models to give yourself different types of um, training. Uh, in the front wheel, the main frame um, of the chair in the front wheel is usually stabilized uh, so that that part remains stable while the back wheels are able to be pushed. Um, athletes will use this um, to recreate that controlled environment to do things like interval training, high speed training, even high resistance training. Uh, some will set up video systems like what you see with, for example, a Peloton um, to keep it interesting and to mimic a race course just to keep motivation up through those cold winter months. Um, of course, it also provides another option if you're in a place and you need to train, but you may not have a lot of space or open road that's safe. Um, mm -hmm. So really important that racers have their options and um, the, the, the roller is an important mechanism for that. Yeah, it's real interesting with with we've got a workout group that works out. It's called the Low Roller Club, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and we we use these types of devices. And, and one of the one of the challenges. Well, I've heard someone say, what's the best type of exercise? And it's a, a little bit of a riddle, but um, the one you do is the best type of exercise, <laughs> right? And yep. so in order to actually um, show up, if you will, uh, community is really, uh, it's essential, I think. Community has been the king 
um, uh, I heard someone say the word community, they broke it down to common unity. Yeah. And right now we have community because we're all here participating mm -hmm. in the Falmouth uh, road race. And so uh, one of the things about having a roller and being indoors and having the beauty of virtual is we can work out with people all over the world yeah. and have that community that you may not have where you live, but you can connect online. And so having a roller allows you to work out in a stationary location. But if you don't have community, it's just nothing but pain. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it could just be brutal. And so when you have somebody to share the, um, the discomfort of the actual workout together, it, it helps you get through it. And it's amazing how hard you'll go if you're doing it with somebody else. And so yeah. these rollers really enable us to do that kind of a thing. Absolutely agree. So now we wanted to talk a little bit about the history of wheelchair racing in Falmouth. So Falmouth, um, of course, is a historic race taking place on Cape Cod. The first Falmouth road race um, uh, gun went off in 1973. Um, at that time, it was called the Falmouth Marathon. Um, and of course it wasn't a marathon, but it was dubbed that and it was held on a Wednesday. And it was on a Wednesday because it was the birthday of the founder, uh, Tommy, Tommy Leonard, and that year he was 40. Um, and it wasn't a marathon as noted, but the same seven mile course that athletes run today and wheel today uh, by Nobska Lighthouse running along the shore. Um, and why seven miles? Because it, the seven miles is the distance between the Captain Kidd restaurant in Woods Hole at the start line. Um, and where the finish line is at Brothers Four, which used to be a bar. So of course, bar to bar, right? Tommy Leonard, people getting out to run for his birthday, going from one pub to another pub. You know, that was really the roots of the race. And look at what has evolved since then. It's been pretty remarkable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first Falmouth road, Falmouth road race with wheelchairs was in 1975. It was Bill Rogers who encouraged uh, the the father of wheelchair racing, if you will, Bob Hall, to enter Falmouth in 1975. Although this was wheelchair, uh, although this wheelchair racing pioneer was the only racer uh, that first year, he never raced here alone again, and he won six in a row. Uh, the first woman entered the race in 1979. Nice. So Falmouth was thought to be, it's believed to be the first non-marathon wheelchair division in the country. Pretty remarkable. You know, when we think about the roots of this sport and how it evolved over time and the importance of, you know, these athletes um, and race organizers really pushing the envelope back in the 70s to open up equitable opportunities for athletes with disabilities. You know, a lot of credit goes to Falmouth for the early work that was done in that space and for setting a precedent that other uh, road races could follow, particularly non-marathon races, 5Ks, 10Ks, other distances, mm -hmm. um, super important. There are three eight-time winners of the race, uh, all in the wheelchair division. That is Pioneer Bob Hall, as Craig mentioned, uh, a gentleman named Craig Blanchett, who many of you may know, and one of the female athletes, Natalie Bacon. So hats off to Natalie as well. Uh, there yeah. was one notable year. Craig, do you want to talk about 91? Yeah, I was there. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, hurricane. So there was a hurricane named Hurricane Bob, and it came through uh, the Northeast that year. And, uh, you know, the races on Sunday and that year, or the races, uh, yeah, Sunday. And on Monday, we had uh, Hurricane Bob come and take most uh, part of the 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 race course away and it was a gnarly year but that year we had um some amazing tailwinds uh during the race uh, I'll I'll test to that personally <laughs> so some mother nature assistance right yeah, <laughs> yeah we had a course record by the way uh, that <laughs> year um both course records uh in both the male and female race there in 2019 mm -hmm. or no excuse me in 2019 we had uh, course records with Tatiana McFadden. She did uh, 2615. And for those of you that are doing the quick math, that's three minutes and 45 seconds per mile average. And Daniel Romanchuk uh, set the course record in 2019 as well at 2158. That's three minutes and eight seconds per mile pace on average. Blistering times. Blistering, exactly. 
it was a I believe that year there was a hurricane kind of swelling behind them been. that year, <laughs> right? And they were creating their own kind of hurricane. <laughs> So at this, at this time, we want to spotlight a couple of the athletes here, and um, it's really uh, our, our pleasure to have such a, an amazing quality field uh, joining us here for this virtual event. And so at this point here, we want to bring on um, a Daniel Romanchuk. So Daniel Romanchuk right now uh, is the fastest man on wheels on the planet. Um, he's, uh, also an amazing, humble guy, super, super amazing, um, athlete to watch him, watch this young kid, as I would say, um, uh, gr grow into his body and grow into the speed that he was capable of and just an amazing ambassador for our sport. So, uh, so welcome this morning, Daniel, I've got a couple questions for you. How does Falmouth fit into your training schedule? Oh, thank, thank you for having me. Uh, so uh, I really don't fit it into my training schedule. Uh, it, it's really uh, quite quite an important part of it because um, it's uh, kind of at the at the end of the summer uh, and right before a, a lot of the uh, marathons start up. Uh, and so I really I I use it sort of as a marker to see where you know how I. Uh, kind of have been training over the summer and where I, my fitness is. Uh, and so it's really a, I'd say it's a vital race in the year. Mm -hmm. And so do you remember how old you were the first time you came to Falmouth? Who I think I had just turned 15. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yep, you did. At 2013, you turned uh, 15 years old and you finished fourth place that year. Um, only 14 seconds behind me that year <laughs> and I was in third. So I was like, don't let this 15 year old catch me. Please, please. That's motivation. So, yeah, so good. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. We next, yep. excuse me, next like to highlight Tatiana McFadden, very, very well-known racer. Uh, also the preeminent female wheelchair racer globally um, at the present time. Uh, she's 31. Uh, she's a multi, multi-time Paralympic medalist and multi, multi-marathon winner. Um, Tatiana, want to talk to you a little bit about, you recently have expanded your portfolio to work <laughs> as a movie producer uh, for a movie called Rising Phoenix that's due out on Netflix on August 26th, right around the corner. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone on Zoom and Facebook Live. Thank you so much for having me. Um, well, first, I wanted to say Falmouth has always been a special race. My um, grandparents actually met on the Cape, and so we have a little family history there. And I love this course. I think it's challenging and quite beautiful. And it's on the note of the rising phoenix. It's just been when I got asked to be producer and helping on this film, I was shocked and excited and humbled at the same time out of anyone, they, they chose me. So it's been an amazing project. Um, we, two, it's been two years in the making and I'm so excited for people to watch it. It's gonna be out on Netflix on August 26. And I think it's gonna transform the Paralympics. Um, this is talking about the history of the Paralympics and how it originated and it will go all the way through through the athletes highlighted to to Rio. So I I'm very, very excited. It's been quite a journey. Um, and it's been amazing to have two goals as an athlete and to do a film like this as well. It's fantastic. We're so excited to see it. Thank you. All right, Mike. Thank you, Tatiana. Well, good to see you. Thanks for all your investment in our sport too. It's fantastic. Of course. Thank you. Yep. Mike Olson. So we're going to bring up Mike Olson. Um, what is a couple of details here? 36 year old racing for nine years, finished Boston and grandma's marathons and uh, grandma's marathon. And so Mike, um, what is it about Falmouth that makes this race uh, one that you enjoy so much? Nope. Let's see here. Let's unmute you. Can't hear you. We got Mike unmuted. I think he's unmuted. Okay, that's. Oh, yeah, we can't hear. Here, I'll I'll try to I'll try to pretend what you're saying. You say a word, and I'll and I'll because we can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
thank you everybody it's been fantastic being here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know what's going on with the uh with that why don't we jump on so anyway thanks for being here mike let's jump on to katrina no worries. Thanks, Mike. Sorry, I think your, your volume isn't working on your end. Uh, Katrina Gerhard, um, special athlete to the sport. She's a local from Natick, Massachusetts, currently 23 years old, was out training at the University of Illinois and recently returned um, to attend medical school at UMass. So she's not only brawn, she's also brains. Um, Katrina, could you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, Falmouth was your first race, right? It was one of your entrees into the sport. Why did you choose it um, to really launch your career in, in wheelchair racing? Uh, so I started wheelchair racing in high school and um, Falmouth was the first race that I ever did where I saw other wheelchair racers. Um, so I'd, I just started the sport um, and it seemed like a good opportunity because Obviously, it's not a full marathon, so it seemed like something that as a teenager, I could complete the seven miles. Um, and I think they actually reached out to me. They'd heard that I'd been um, competing in high school track in the area, and they were like, hey, do you want to come out and do this? And I was absolutely starstruck by all of the, the famous wheelchair racers who were there, and I just felt so grateful to be there. And then it was wild to, like, a couple years later, be training alongside those, those wheelchair racers and competing with them regularly. So I felt so grateful to, to where it all started in Falmouth. Fantastic. And how's med school going? Oh, med school is great. Yeah, we just started second year this month. So, so we're back on the grind, but, but I really love it. Fantastic. Thanks, Katrina. Yeah, excellent. Let's jump over to Krieg Shabort. Um, Krieger, are you there? Can you come off of mute to make sure we have your audio? Um, basically, Krieg has been around for a long time and it's been a long time ambassador uh many years have i chased kriga at uh falmouth um uh t talk a little bit about with us today about the aspects of your career and how you've come alongside athletes and help them get started as well as some of the things you've been doing to advance the technology of wheelchair racing welcome kriga oh let's see here are you on mute we can't hear you right now. Let's see here. Yep. Yeah, still can't hear you. Hmm. Try, uh, well, let's see here. I'm going to mute you and then you try to unmute here. Try that again. Krieger, is your phone in a case? Because sometimes when phones are there, yeah, now we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep, we can hear you. Yeah, if you're using a Bluetooth or if your thing's on a, on a case, you're not going to be able to hear them. That's what with my issue was. We got you now. Thanks, Michael. Go ahead, Krieger. We can we could hear you there. It did work there towards the end. We just lost Krieger, so we'll have to move on. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so we are going to jump over to Tony, Tony Nugera. Hey, Tony. Thanks for joining us again this morning. Now you've done Falmouth many times. Um, what advice would you give to someone who's about to compete in the wheelchair division in Falmouth? You know this course better than most anyone. Uh oh, oh he's you're, on, you're on mute as well, Tony. So click on the screen and click unmute if you can with those gnarly fingers. <laughs> those are some of the old school racing gloves right there, folks. There he is. Try again, Tony. Yeah, I don't know oh, you're on again. There's a there's a technique that many of us have learned where we use our, our nose as the finger. Right. There, you, there go. you go. You got it. You got it. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Good morning to everyone. Um, my advice to a, a newcomer athlete to, to the farm with is to enjoy the 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 great people are found with. The, the people that volunteer, uh, I think that's my, my um, when I think of Falmouth, I think of the people that live in Falmouth and the people that work for the race. Um, they they awesome, they welcome you every year. And, um, and plus it's a beautiful place to go to in, in August. So mm -hmm. I always look, um, I've been bringing my kids for Falmouth since they were babies. Uh, for, for 20 years now, and I was looking forward to 
to go up there and enjoy the environment, the race, and the competition also, of course. And on top of that, it's probably the most beautiful course in the world for a race. Yes. Yeah. I second that. <laughs> yeah, today it'll be virtually the uh, most beautiful road race in the world. Awesome. Yeah, so next up we've got, uh, thank you, Tony. It's good to see you again. Um, by the way, it looks like you're staying in shape all these years. It's just amazing what wheelchair racing has done for us all. Good to see you. Um, so we've got a few um, folks that are first timers that are joining us from around the world. This is um, literally a um, a first time event where people could participate in the Falmouth Road Race and not actually be at Cape Cod. So we've got um, uh, John Boy from London, actually. And um, John Boy, if you want to come off of mute there and tell us just a little bit about how uh, um, the fir your first race was the London Marathon. What, what, what was it about the London Marathon that, um, why you chose that as your first race? Uh, well, first of all, good morning. And in my case, good afternoon to everybody. <laughs> but um, yeah, to be honest with you, my first, yeah, my first race was the 2015 London Marathon. Um, solely because before I was even a wheelchair racer, in the days when I used to be a thrower, I promised uh, my parents that I would do the London Marathon at some point in my life. And yeah, long story short, I retired from throwing, become a wheelchair racer. And about three months after that, I was in the London Marathon. <laughs> and how did you hear? That's fantastic. By the way, thanks for bringing the accent and the whole, the, all of it, right? Everybody says that to me. What is it with the British accent? I know, it's awesome. just beautiful. I know you think our... <laughs> I know you're thinking that my accent is amazing too. I get it. it um, is, trust me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so how did you hear about Falmouth this year and what brings you over to, to, to join us in Falmouth? Um, it was after the 2019 event, to be honest, like when the, the course records were broken. And um, I was planning on coming over, to be fair, but obviously because of the old COVID-19 situation and and everything else that goes on, it's, yeah, I just jumped on and took the virtual road instead, really. But it sounds like a great course. The scenery is supposed to be good. The hospitality, the local people, everything. Just, it just sounds like a great package, you know. So I thought, why not? It's good as as good as any place to go. Mm, yeah, perfect. Fantastic. Fantastic. By the way, just a quick little note, um, the the actual start of the race, this is for folks that are watching us on Facebook Live, um, the start of the race will be at 10.35 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we've got, I don't know, seven, seven minutes or so, eight minutes. Um, so uh, be paying attention for that. Back to you, Sherry. Thanks, Craig. So we're next, next going to turn to Delmas Mayo. Um, Delmas, you're a local athlete as well, up and comer, lots of talents. Uh, you play sled hockey, you play wheelchair basketball, you do motocross, and now wheelchair racing. Which is your favorite? <laughs> um, well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I believe my favorite would be WCMX. Uh, it's I dislike WCMX because it's like when I'm doing WCMX, I don't have to worry about... Um, people watching me, um, saying this kid is in a wheelchair. Um, I just feel like um, they're watching me because I'm doing good. Yeah, it's all about the sport, right? Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Thanks, Tomas. There's so many people yeah. talk about how wheelchair racing in particular, but adaptive sports, um, Paralympic sports, it really transcends that disability stereotype. Um, and it focuses people on the sport and the achievement. Uh, and that's what it's all about, right? We're not here to we're not here for sympathy. We're here because we want to achieve um, and race and have a good time and be with our friends. Uh, so thanks, Don Moss, for that reminder. Great. By the way, for those of you that don't know what WCMX, it's uh, it's wheelchair, uh, essentially motocross, where, where you're doing things uh, around uh, like a skate park and and all that kind of ramps and jumps and all that kind of fun fun stuff. You want to go over to Fonseca, La, uh, uh, Fa Fonseca? Yeah, we can't miss Fa. So Fa, welcome. We have Fa Fonseca here from Brazil, as well as a cohort um, of Brazilian athletes. We're so excited to have you. 
And when we were collecting bio information, we were all absolutely blown away by Fa's <laughs> biopic. So thanks Fa for um, this pose. Um, clearly you're superwoman, I'm sure in your life to many people. Um, could you tell us a little bit about um, the wheelchair racing community in Brazil? Oh, sounds like she's not here. Maybe another one of our brilliant Brazilian contingent uh, could comment. Any of our Brazilian athletes like to say hello? You can come off mute. I can talk to you. Yeah, great. Welcome, Danielle. Or, oh my gosh. No, we can hear you. Are you listening to me now? Yes, we yes. can hear you. Yes, hi. 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 Uh, here is Daniel from Brazil. So uh, you would like to know about the racing uh, community wheelchair here in Brazil, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So uh, today I think we have eight or nine athletes from Brazil uh, in this amazing meeting. And uh, we are not a huge group here in Brazil, but we have a lot of athletes with uh, amazing experiences like Fa, we have Aline Rocha, either our best uh, girl racing chair here, our best female athlete. We have also Pierre, he's here today. He's the best male uh, athlete. We have uh, three different uh, coaches that they are, they are specialized in uh, racing wheelchair uh, and one of, uh, one of them is my coach, is uh, Fernando Orso. He's here today also. We are not uh, a huge group, but we are united. We used to train together by Zoom <laughs> every weekend during the, the, the quarantine. So we are all here today with you. It's a pleasure for us. Thanks, Sanya. We're so excited. <laughs> yes, perfect. All right, we are going to um, talk a little bit briefly about the co course and some of the one of my favorite things about this particular race is the course. Uh, this this race, I would say, has a little bit of everything. Uh, it has uh, some rolly ups and downs with some curves in through just some amazing, um, you know, uh, tree covered it's almost like a tunnel in some of the sections for the first roughly half of the race and you go up and down these rolly heels and around these corners and it's it's just um it, some people that love to climb hills love this race and there's good the roads are just smooth and amazing and then at some at one point you come out onto uh, surf i think it's surf street surf drive and it's right you come out and it's flat and it's straight and you look to the right and there's sand and ocean and it gets it's like the whole landscape of the race changes at that point that's right about coming just after mile three and that just goes flat for a while and then you have a couple of 90 degree turns all very flat um, totally different strategy for that portion of the course and then as you get um, around the six mile marker, you start to have a couple of more hills. And then boy, right about six, six and a half miles, you have a sharp left hand corner, two lane road, crowd on both sides of the road. There's the ocean off in the distance. And then you hit this wall. And um, quite honestly, I've been thankful for that wall many times. Uh, I know Daniel's enjoyed that wall as well. But you literally, it's just this huge hill that hits you um, right before the finish line. And you climb up this hill, then it's flat along a, a little section to the top of the hill with people, crowds on both sides of the road. And then it's a downhill finish across the finish line. And uh, uh, every year we're meted with a, a group of very, uh, lots of smiling, cheering fans. And it's just, it, it is um, it's one of the few races that you actually notice while you're racing it because it um, it's just so amazing. Some races that we do are, are kind of just, you don't notice it. You notice the start line and the finish line, not much else in between. And Falmouth is different in that way. And it's just fantastic. 
So I love this course. One of the most memorable moments was in 1977, when at the starting line, spectators were hanging out the windows of the classrooms and even the firehouse. I've never seen anything, uh, actually, I haven't actually seen anything like that. This was one of the quotes from Bill, Bill Lear. So this is from his voice. He's never seen anything like that in a small town like Woods Hole. Um, <laughs> it's amazing, amazing, actually. Okay. So um, uh, another thing is during today's race, uh, Herman actually in 2019 had a GoPro on the front of his racing chair. And so he actually filmed the entire race. Uh, actually, 2018 is when he did that. And so the beauty of that particular um, video is we're going to be utilizing that today so you can see the course race. Um, what made you think about actually doing that this year? Or that year? Uh, well, I, uh, I'm a strategist, if you will, in racing. So I wanted a, a course, uh, you know, breakdown to have any time I want. And I wanted to show off the beautiful course that is Falmouth. I mean, you know, what other race are you going by the Atlantic Ocean and, you know, seeing all the, the cool scenery that is. So. Yeah. Well, we are so glad that you did that because who knew that we would be using it like we are going to be using it this year. All right, we're going to toss it over to Sherry for our national anthem, and we are getting ready to get going. So take it Thanks, away, Sherry. Craig. Yeah, we are about to kick things off. So now we have, um, similar to our video of the race course, we also have a video of um, the national anthem and flag raise at the start of the Falmouth Road Race. Um, as we know, this is a really memorable, historic part of the race. Every year the race kicks off with our national anthem, a very special moment uh, to really think about um, why we're all here, um, what's happening in our world, and of course, to give recognition to all of those who serve. So we're gonna kick things off now with the national anthem. Guys, by the way, that was an amazingly, if that flag looks huge on the, on the screen, it's because it actually, uh, it is the biggest flag I've ever seen. It is absolutely fantastic. All right. So we're going to get started here in about roughly about 30 seconds. So uh, kind of get things dialed in, dialed in, and uh, we are going to get rolling to the start of the, the race here. We are going to be uh, talking to a few people here and there throughout the race and kind of keeping things lively, talking about some of the different aspects of the course. All right, so um, let's go at 39 after. So we've got just a few 10 seconds or so, and we will get rolling. And by the way, if you want to see a video of everybody, you can switch to gallery view and uh, if you're on a computer. And all right, so five four three two one uh, you guys can start and the video is going to get started here any second now here we go oh there was david mcgillivray who's fantastic making sure the final preparations are there we're getting in timing sync. All right, off. here we go. We're off. Good job, everybody. Take it away. There's Daniel leading. Yeah, if you can see the guy in blue, <laughs> jump in behind him. He's about to put a tornado behind it's a good him. Right? That's a good draft to have. Yeah. I think that might be Tatiana up there as well. <laughs> I think it is. With the pink socks. Get him, get him. <laughs> 
So as we're getting started in the race right here, it starts off as you're leaving Woods Hole. This is a little bit of an uphill section here. It's, it's actually sometimes, as Daniel's doing in, in, in um, his normal form, uh, at the Falmouth Road Race, you can get away on the first uphill and hold it all the way to the finish. And, and uh, Daniel is away and up these first few hills. Um, we're going to come to the top of this hill and there's going to be a hard right hand corner. And then we have our first downhill. So for those of you that are riding on your rollers, go ahead and keep it, keep it dialed in right here. Work a little bit hard and I'll let you know when you can back her down simulating the first downhill. We see uh, everybody pushing. Um, we see uh, this fantastic community of athletes um, all here on Zoom um, doing this race course virtually. Uh, to all of our athletes, remember, uh, this would be a great time to have your cameras on so we can see you going for it. Um, mm -hmm. And to those of, who are watching, um, we have around about 45 to 50 athletes here pushing this race virtually. Pretty remarkable. Mm. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So we are still climbing up this hill. We're coming up close to that first right hander. The road's really wide right here. One of the interesting things about uh, coming into Woods Hole is Woods Hole doesn't go anywhere. Um, Jose, we're passing you, Jose. Get it, get it, get it. He's here. Anyway, so we, we bust everybody down into this little town, and then we basically race out. So here's the first corner. We've all been working hard. When we turn this corner, if you want, you know, you can simulate the little bit of the downhill. One thing for sure is you want to get two or three, four or five strokes right off the top of here as much as you can, and then you're into a bit of a coast uh down this downhill and you will see as i was talking about earlier with the trees going over the top of the road kind of almost simulates a bit of a tunnel this is a a very very fun and exciting uh time of the race it's important to push through the top of the hill um that really lets the racers get that top end speed in the coast section once you hit a, there's a certain speed once your wheels start turning a certain speed you can't push anymore right because if you hit the wheel, you'll actually slow it down. So it's really important for athletes to push through the top of the hill and to get those extra strokes in right at the top so that they can hit their peak speeds, as Craig noted. Yeah, and as you can see, there's these little rolly hills. So right here is when you're gonna spin it up again and you're gonna try to get as much speed as you can. And if you drop down into a tucked position, of course, there's no drafting, there's no real uh, benefit of, of coasting uh, when you're on a roller. But when you're actually in the race, you can get down into the most aerodynamic position you can, and you utilize the downhill and the smooth course as much as possible. For me, when I'm here, I'm, I'm breathing a lot. I'm drinking water. And I'm just trying to hold the most, the best position I can. Right here is your first big downhill. So for those of you that are pushing, you if you want to simulate it, where well, we're uh, coasting out onto the flat ground here, you're trying to hold as much speed as possible. You can see Herman in the video here. A um, couple guys are slipping around him. They've been behind him drafting on the downhill, and that's a little bit of that slingshot effect uh, that'll yeah. have happen. Some athletes, um, you know, athletes tend to, many of them have a strength either as a climber or a coaster, it really depends a lot on things like strength to weight ratio, um, you know, and most athletes will kind of have a sense of, of where their strengths are and they'll use that to their tactical advantage on the course. So for example, if you're a good climber, you know that through these sections of the course, you can probably get some distance on people and particularly use that, you know, near the end on that last big climb, um, as Craig mentioned. This is an uphill portion of the course, but it's also tricky because it's uphill with some winding yeah. corners. Mm -hmm. And so you got the ocean on your right, you got the mainland on the left, and we are climbing now. So if you are, if you're pushing, you want to kind of dig in and go hard, don't stop. I'll let you know when we get to the top of the hill. So push, 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 push. We're climbing, we're climbing, we're climbing. This yep. is a one of the steepest uh, sections of the course. We got a lighthouse on the left, and I always see that lighthouse and I go, uh the, the it's almost over we're about to get to the top keep pushing keep pushing, you'll see, pushing you'll see how athletes in these uphill sections while they're climbing they shorten their strokes down you really want to spend as much time on the rim as possible um in order to get um the best speed in your climb whereas right. you'll see when the athletes oh go ahead <laughs> 10 hard strokes 10 hard strokes and then you can uh you can rest a little bit 10 count them count them hard 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 go 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 
All right, now you can rest a little bit. We're on a downhill. Keep keep your arms moving, but but we're simulating that downhill. Back to you, Sherry. I was just going to say, you'll see the athlete, for those of you who are watching, you'll see that the athlete's stroke change dependent on where they're at on the course. Um, so when they're climbing, they'll use those nice short strokes, a lot of contact time on the rim, whereas when they go into these sections where they're um, coming to the top of the hill, you'll see their... Um, their uh, push gets a lot, uh, there's a lot more follow through, a lot less time on the rim. And you'll see later when they're in some of the flat sections as well, a much bigger push, a much bigger stroke as opposed to the little ones that you use climbing. This is real fast here. If you notice the guys that are up in front, their their hands are coming up high behind them and then they, they stop yeah. pushing for a while because this is, oddly enough, a very fast section. And now we're, we're in these little rolly sections. So there's really fast sections followed by short little hills with these little windy turns. Oh, I love this course. It's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun. All right. Now we're, we're hitting another little downhill. So give us 10 quick strokes, 10 hard ones, 10 hard ones. Go, 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 go. Good job, everybody. Perfect. All right, you can take a little breather here as we're coming around this corner. And now we're starting, oddly enough, we're starting another climb. So it's time to get to work again, get into I'm your rolling. strong, consistent power stroke. And we're climbing. This is, I think we're just coming up, mm, roughly coming up on the two mile marker. About five, coming up on about five to go, about just about 200 down. By the way, if you're joining us on Facebook, thank you so much for joining us today. Feel free to share this out with your friends. Uh, we're really essentially setting a, um, a, new, a new era of racing, and we're all racing together today uh, in the Falmouth Road Race. This is a great part of the course where you go underneath this bridge. Um, it, it's a little... Uh, it seems like the road's gotten very narrow there. Uh, you're in a bit of oxygen debt with these little short uh, uh, hill climbs. And then it's got all these little um, wavy turns. And sometimes, you know, you can lose sight of the person in front of you. And it's a real, real tricky portion. All right, mm -hmm. 10 quick strokes again. We're on the downhill again. Wind it up, wind it up. After you get 10, you can go into maybe a little bit more of an easier stroke and simulate that, the coasting section. Uh, this is the beauty of this part of the race where you have a lot of the rolling ups and downs. Um, that's going to end as soon as we get to the three mile marker and it's going to be time to work. Mm -hmm. It's nice and solid. All right. We are back on the uphill. And it's fun because you can see these two guys in front of them, um, Jose Padillo, who's actually with us today. He's the guy that's right up in front of Herman here um, in the race. How did you do on the on the downhills uh, sections? What was your strategy? Just you were just passing the two mile marker, two mile marker. Excellent. Great. Yeah. You know, Craig, I was, I, I'm a fairly small person. So I was, a, I was climber. Right. And so my strategy was always to, um, as much as I could, uh, you know, use this techniques to push through the top of the hill, gain as much speed as I could, if, you know, frankly, if possible, tuck in behind a bigger athlete, uh, where I could get a good draft going and then to save most of it for the climbs. What about you? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I, I, the, the beauty of being light and strong is you can climb well and exactly. if you figured out the aerodynamics, you can coast well. And uh, typically, um, people favor one or the other. Yeah. Um, it's it's important. You can coast well, but I love the hills. Bloomsday, Falmouth, uh, Peach Street, many races that have those. Uh, one of the races I never really enjoyed was Gasparilla because it started flat, it went out, <laughs> it turned around, and it came back, and it was yeah. just torture for me so i love <laughs> these kinds of races of course, love now, of course like found was much more interesting right you have all the different oh, look at this course it's, yeah it's, it's unbelievable yeah and it suits you know there's sections that suit everyone right it really brings it all which i think is is really one of the only road races out there that does that you know you have your roller rolling hills you have your flat section mm -hmm. um along the water where the headwind or tailwind can either be really tough or really helpful, depending on which way it's blowing. And then you have your um, last section through the neighborhoods and then that big climb right at the end. So it's really a variable course um, and really brings all that variety, which is part of what makes it so interesting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. By the way, the, it, it looks like we're, uh, Tatiana, well, she's right there on the right, I she believe, sure with, 
<laughs> and so she's duking it out with the with the guys. You can see her. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, the pink number on the back there. Yep. And I don't know, that's, oh, that's Tony. I can tell by the gloves. That's Tony Nagata W two. Big climb, and you can see the goat. Um, you can see Herman. Yeah, and now he's caught a little draft there. It doesn't help as much on the climbs, but helps if you can hang on to it then into yep. the next section. It's it seems like it helps a lot. But it feels like it. <laughs> you can tell boy Tony's been he's just got a great stroke. <laughs> And uh, so right now we're, we are on an uphill climb. We are, this is actually one of the hardest climbs, uh, uh, probably the second hardest climb of the course. Uh, Tatiana, she is so strong. So smooth. And, uh, mm -hmm. She's, uh, she's dropping, dropping the boys. <laughs> fantastic. I love it. <laughs> and then now we're getting, we're, we're cresting that hill. This is actually, I would say probably the longest downhill of the course. This is a fantastic section and we want as much speed as you can because we're going to come down onto surf and, um, and you want to carry as much, as much speed. There's a slight little uphill here and then we drop down in. Um, so it's a great part of the course. You can see the guys, everybody's in a tuck position and, uh, it's critical. Uh, oh, Tatiana, you're amazing. <laughs> Pushing at that speed. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, if you have a really good tuck, you can see right there, Jose, he's in a nice tuck and he's sliding by. We got a little blip of an uphill and then a little downhill onto, onto surf. Um, fantastic section. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so one year, um, we are literally uh, coming just about the three mile marker here. And uh, I remember um, one year, I, I can't remember the, uh, this is the three mile marker right there, uh, coming down. Uh, and if you'll visualize this right here, I was looking down out in front of me and I saw that this pavement uh, turned into, uh, it looked like a lake. And the, the, <laughs> there was so much rain that year and I think, I don't know what was going on, but right here, I was looking down in front of me, kind of around this corner, and I saw that the road disappeared. First time, actually the second time, oddly enough, Crescent City Classic, we had a lot of rain one year, but coming down onto this thing, I wasn't sure if I should just splash right in through this um, this <laughs> river that was coming across the course or what I should do. I didn't know what would happen at speed, Mm -hmm. And you can see right here, we're coming down onto this and, and right up here, the whole road was just water. And uh, it was about, turned out to be right up to the axles. It was about eight right to up. 10 inches worth of water. And um, oddly enough, wheelchairs go through that pretty easily. So just so you know, if you yeah. ever have that situation. <laughs> so now it looks like we're on surf drive now, right, Craig? Mm -hmm. yep, yeah, we are. So you see so the ocean to the right. Yeah. Yep. So we want to highlight one of our racers on the um, event today, Maddie Wilson, our youngest female wheelchair racer, a rising star in the sport. Uh, Maddie started the sport at seven. Hey, Maddie. And she says that her favorite moment at Falmouth is when she hits this straightaway along the beach and the crowd gets bigger and there's bands playing and music playing, which which is uh, it's just such an exciting time. Um, in this section, there's five music, music stations, three or four cheer stations, and about 20,000 spectators along the course. So really exciting part of the course for athletes. Mm -hmm. Maddie, thanks for joining us. Still got the pink chair, I see. Love it. Yeah. You working hard today, Maddie? Give us a thumbs up. <laughs> She's pushing <laughs> She's too like, hard. I'm busy. I'm busy bracing. Yeah, exactly. Can't stop. Can't stop pushing, Craig. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> It looks like her rollers, she got a lot of resistance on there. So if she stopped pushing, that thing's going to stop rolling. <laughs> exactly. Keep it up, Maddie. You're doing Maddie. great, Maddie. So this is actually a really interesting portion of the course where um, the rolling hills are gone. And if there's a tailwind, you probably got a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. If there's a headwind, you're looking to draft. And you can see <laughs> the bu everybody's bunching up into a draft here. Um, you know, uh, that's Tony Nogueira, W2, and he's trying to um, get in behind Jose. And Herman, of course, is where the camera angle is. But if you've got a headwind here, it is torturous, especially if you're out in front because there's no one to draft. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're just trying to tuck in. You can see Tony uh master uh master wheelchair racer and tactician he's uh playing it smart tucking in behind jose there 
for those watching on Facebook Live, um, you can see Tony there has a spare tire on the back of his chair. So athletes usually bring a spare a tire tube as well as a little CO2 cartridge in case they get a flat uh, on the course. Um, you gotta be prepared to fix your own flats. It's part of the sport. It's part of how we train and part of what we learn when we're um, getting to know the sport. Um, you come prepared. Um, so most athletes will, will um, tape a spare somewhere sort of tucked into the chair so it doesn't affect their aerodynamics at all, but they have it on hand just in case. And it does happen. <laughs> and one, one, uh, yeah, it does. One awesome thing. I got a story to tell you about Craig in a minute, but one thing, if you want to remove the spare tire from your body, wheelchair racing is a great idea. Uh, <laughs> But uh, one year I asked uh, Kriga and I said to him, uh, I said, do you ever, you know, change, you know, tell me about, because he had a, a spare tire in his chair. And I said, how fast uh, can you change a spare tire? And uh, he's practiced that uh, quite a bit. I don't know if you're able to come off of um, mute, uh, Kriga, and talk about the idea. Um, he actually trained mm -hmm. to... Um, change a spare tire and i filmed him one year doing that and it was he said i think i can do it in under a minute and i said i'd like to see that in 58 seconds <laughs> it was awesome tell us a little bit about that uh strategy for krieger oh no oh no we can't hear you krieger yeah we <laughs> it's okay it's okay yeah try try <laughs> clicking on mute and then no, no, no. There yeah, we go. Yeah. Now we can hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got can you. you hear me now? Yep. Yes. Okay, let me just adjust the volume here a little bit. Okay. We can hear you perfectly well, by the way. Yeah. Okay. No need to adjust. All right. So, yeah, that was long ago. Um, <laughs> whew, my camera is going all directions <laughs> to be like this. Yeah. All right. Um, what year was that? What, was that? I think that was the first year Daniel was there, right? Probably. Yeah. We were in the lobby of the yeah. hotel and I said, let's see what you got. Yeah. Yeah. That was uh, uh, something I had to, I had to practice quite a bit, actually. In yeah. the early nine, late nineties, I had a lot of flat tires for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> and I always thought like, I got to figure it out. So then I just went home and I, and I trained it and I trained it and I, until I figured it out and I could do it pretty quick. So without losing too much time. And I'm telling you, it helps a lot. If yeah. you can do it, if you're confident in doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thanks, Gregor. Almost every, I'd say one thing that athletes learn as they rise up through the sport, almost every athlete is an incredibly, wheelchair racer is an incredibly handy person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, every athlete travels with their own toolkit, their own air compressor, typically spares, spare wheelchair parts. Um, you know, a lot of athletes fly with their racing chairs and you can develop little, um, you know, problems uh, when the chairs come on off the plane. And so you got to be really adept with your own equipment. I always joked, you know, I started racing when I was, I think, 12 or 13. Um, and I was one of the only people in my high school, one of the only girls in my high school, especially who had my own toolbox <laughs> and my own set of equipment. Right. So it pushes you. Uh, to really learn this stuff and to um, develop your own skill set in the equipment in of itself. Yeah, this is an interesting part of the course. We just took off of Surf Drive. We um, we you have a left hand corner, and oh man, that corner seems like it never happens. And now we take uh, the first right um, after that. So now we're into these neighborhoods. And what's really beautiful about this is you have people that come down to the Cape for the weekend and they rent out these houses. And, um, and so they will come out and they will put out their chairs and, um, cheer you on through the section. This is all, um, flat, uh, but this is sheltered from the wind because now we're back in the trees. And so it gives you a little bit of relief if you've had a huge headwind back on surf drive. Um, and so this is a section too, where you can see the guy in front of you and you can, you can reel him in. You can see Tony really, really dialing it up here. Um, on this flat section, and he's trying to chase down the guy in front um, of him. But it's a it's a it's a new tactic because you're not just out there suffering against the wind. You're you're in a little bit of um, reprieve from the wind, 
and but it's still really flat there's no mm. no big downhills or coasting here but the road is really really nice and i know when i get into this section uh that i'm getting you know eh, close to the halfway point here mm -hmm. what's your strategy coming through this section here uh coming up to the five mile marker okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you're in the race here and this section are you usually out in the front are you chasing or what's your strategy as you kind of go through this flat section there sherry yeah you know i am um, in the flat section um you know i by this time you're really i mean this section of the race you're really knowing like how you're feeling from the standpoint mm -hmm. of whether you still got some gas in the tank or whether you're feeling pretty depleted so um, that helps to dictate some of it, you know, how you're feeling overall. Um, I think that this is a great section, you know, if you're an athlete <clears throat> who um, struggled a little bit with that, that flat, set, excuse me, flat section on surf drive, it's a, it's a good section to conserve a little bit and get ready for the hills. Um, it's also a good section to, to try to catch a little draft, you know, here we're passing Tatiana um, and she's going it alone here, probably, you know, in the front of the uh, women's division. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's by this section of the course that you, you know, whether you're, you're struggling or you're ready to potentially bring home a win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a good section of the course here. We've mm -hmm. gone through a couple of the 90 degree turns and this white building, uh, in my memory, this is one of the things when I see that white building, I know, um, mm -hmm. you know, we're getting closer to the finish. Uh, it's not over yet. You're, we're coming up to a right hand corner here. And there's a little bit of a downhill. And so, you know, at this point, you're I'm the, the flying bridge. We're just passing the flying bridge there. And I know Gary Brindell uh, says the mile marker five to the five and a half um, Scranton Avenue approaching the flying bridge restaurant. This Gary says this was his first ever Falmouth in 2003. Uh, my good friend, uh, Tim Kelly, another wheelchair racer who had raced Falmouth for many years before me, saw me on mile five or so really started to feel the hot summer heat. He sprinted up to me, got in front of me so that I could, I could draft off of him and get a little bit of rest. That was all he needed to rejuvenate me so that by the time we got to the last hill near the finish line, I was able to sprint up and beat him to finish fourth overall. <laughs> Never forget that. We can see you. You're on uh, live, Gary. How you doing, hey, buddy? Gary. How you feeling? Fantastic experience, you know? <laughs> Maybe, not any other racers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you visualizing, like, in your mind, the course? Like, remember being there? It's fantastic. Oh, it's fantastic, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us, man. Another another us. racer I wanted to call out. Um, Matt Kinsella and I this week had the chance to talk to um, Jim Knopp, who many of you know, um, one of the greats in the sport. Craig, you probably raced with Jim. Oh, <laughs> many times. Many oh, times. You guys were quite the rivalry, had quite the rivalry, if I recall. Oh my goodness. But Jim yeah. said that he would often um, he won the race in 89, 90, and 93. And he would often do a race in Seattle on Saturday called Wheels on Fire and then take a flight to Boston, land at Boston, practically in the middle of the night, rent a car, drive down to Falmouth, get maybe an hour or two of sleep and then jump in the chair to do the Falmouth road race. So pretty, oh. remar pretty remarkable. Yeah, um, the, the Wheels of Fire race that in 86, that was my first ever, that was the first year they had that race and that was my first official wheelchair race. By the way, this section of the course, we just went down a little bit. It's kind of a U, it's a little bit of a downhill. We took a hard right, a little bit of a downhill, another hard right. And now we're on, um, this section is, you can you can smell the finish line basically at this point. <laughs> it is a, uh, a fantastic po uh, portion of the course. You can see that there, the crowd is gaining in size. There's more density to the crowd because we are getting closer and closer to the finish line. Um, if you're feeling really good, this is a good part of the race. If you're tired, you're looking back a lot because people are probably catching you at this point. <laughs> We're just right. passing the six mile marker. So you're feeling it here. It's also hot in this section. Oh. You no, know, not as much, not as much breeze, um, headwind or tailwind either way. It's just hot. The air's a little bit more still, you know, this is when, um, you're, you're really feeling it. Mm -hmm. Um, Definitely. If you're a racer like Daniel or Tatiana, you're probably starting to visualize that last push for the finish and really getting mentally prepped for that. 
Yeah, there's a section coming up right here where the road kind of it looks almost like it splits off to the left and to the right. Um, we have a little right hander here. Uh, one year, um, uh, I think the last year I won it, I was coming across uh, this. Is, we just passed the 10K mark, so that's 6.2 mm -hmm. miles. And um, I had about, um, I don't know, 400 yards gap. Uh, and there was three guys that were chasing me down. And um, at, at, at one point, I, I missed a stroke and my glove got caught on the hand rim and it ripped my glove off my hand. I and I, I was like, <laughs> okay, that is, that's like all of a sudden one of your shoes flies off with that's the sock it. and all, right? <laughs> and I, I had, this, it was, and I'm rolling. And I looked back and I was like, okay, they're right there. I know the finish line isn't too far away. Do I stop, turn around and go back and get my glove and potentially be caught? Or do I just, just push on a bare hand to the finish line? And I, and I chose the, I chose to go gloveless, if you will. And, uh, wow, my, my finger, um, it did not thank me for it. I, no. I'll tell you that it was <laughs> bloody at the finish line. You can see this section here. We're coming down and there's a hard left hand corner. You can see the ocean off in the distance. Um, you're you're pretty. I'm usually pretty excited to see this corner because I know mm -hmm. this wall is coming up in front of us. But that year with no glove, I was wondering how I was going to really, really lean into it Unreal. and Unreal. push up the hill. One of our uh, one of our athletes, Jason Robinson, has a story from this, this part of the course. He said that uh, a memory that always comes to mind is his first time doing Falmouth when he was 11 years old. And he came down the hill into the area near the beach and it opened up into the ocean. And he got so distracted that he forgot, <laughs> forgot about the race. It was just struck by that beauty. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so when I uh, first started racing, uh, Falmouth was one of the second road races that I've ever done. So when I first came here, I wasn't really competitive at the age of 11. So I was just really taking it and having a good time and enjoying the scenery of the race because it's my, it was my first time being near the ocean. So um, when I came up that hill and I uh, was able to just look out and everything, I was already pushing at a pretty slow pace going up the hill because uh, I was only 11. But uh, by the time I got up to the end of the top of the hill, I think I looked around for a good second and then realized I had to go to the finish line. <laughs> right. Yep, well, excellent. that's what it's all about, right? It's yeah. all about the sport as a catalyst to see the world, enjoy the scenery, meet new people. Um, and if you have a good day, potentially bring home a win. Um, but so we just story. climbed a pretty steep hill uh, at this point. Let's give uh, 20 hard strokes because we are going to try to wind it up as much as we can. Ready? Get it. Get it. 20, 20. Come on. Let's go. Push hard. Sprint. Come on. Come on. Count them out. Come on. Come on. We're passing. Tatiana, she's on our on our right there. On your tail now. She, she might come back around. <laughs> this is a hard section. You see that flag up in front of you? That is a glorious sight in many, many, many ways. You know the finish line is coming. Work hard here. Work hard. It is coming. Yep. You got Actually, it. Actually, keep going. Let's sprint all the way to the finish. There Let's it do is. it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Coming down the hill. Come on. Come on. Come on. We're almost there. Three seconds to go. Come on, come on, come on. Push it. Way to go. That's the finish. Well Good done. Good job, you guys. Amazing. Fan fantastic. That is a, a one of the largest, um, I know it's the largest flag I've ever seen, and seeing that thing mm -hmm. blowing in the wind every year has been absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. So great job, everybody. Go ahead and uh, uh, if you want to do a little bit of a cool down here, um, uh, great job. You all did about, uh, it was about 28, 28, 29 minutes technically for a seven mile race. So you all averaged about four minutes per mile today. So way to go team. Fantastic. So if athletes want to start to cool down, potentially take off some of your gear if you're interested. And uh, what we're hoping to do is if everybody could Grab your medal. You're a mm -hmm. virtual Falmouth finisher. Why, while you're grabbing your medal, I'm going to go through just a little bit of the, um, what, what's amazing is the first time ever where uh, normally we show up to the, um, uh, to the race headquarters and we go around and we get our race number and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this year they sent us uh, everything 
And so I'm just going to go through what came in the in the kit. So we've got uh, a number with our name on it, right? We've got um, a, a Falmouth Road Race uh, commemorative. One of these things. Can you imagine if this is, you know, uh, this whole thing goes away? These are going to be um, a collector's items. We've got the Falmouth Road Race uh, bag. Uh, of course, every year for all these years, there's been an official Falmouth Road Race uh, mug that we have. And if you guys are all having your um, your uh, finishers uh, trophy, our little medal here, we can put that on. We'll get a what, what I'd like to do is we're going to take a screenshot of everybody with their medal on. So if you don't have your medal, go grab it quickly and we're going to get a, um, a screenshot with everybody. Looking with good, Maddie. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> we have um, 53 people here today. So, um, all right, guys. So hold your medal up. Give us a thumbs up with your other hand. Ready? Three. Oh, Michael, well, hold on a second. Michael's grabbing his. There you go. Let's see here. Want to make sure we get everybody that we can. Don't miss out on anybody. All right. Three, two, one. All right. Let me try that one more time because uh, we... I got Daniel on that one. That was pretty good. Three, <laughs> two, one. Excellent. Good job making history, literally making history today uh, with the rest of us. Um, we are so glad that you guys showed up. Don't go anywhere, by the way. We've got our drawing coming up. Um, a little um, a post, post, race, post race chat that we want to uh, talk through. Um, uh, do you want to, um, uh, let's see here, looking through a couple things here. Uh, what do you got? What did you, let's, let's, I, what I'd like to do at this point is kind of um, just interview and talk to a couple of you guys as far as um, essentially we all did our first virtual Falmouth today. And some of you are on hand cranks, some of you are on, most of you are on wheelchairs. But um, let's see here. Who do we want to, um, Actually, why don't we talk to Bill Lair? Yeah. Um, you come perfect. off of mute. Bill Lair is a longtime veteran of this race. What was it like, kind of uh, just the whole thing about still being here uh, and being part of this uh, this group? Welcome, Bill. Uh, thank you. It's great to be here. And uh, thank everybody at Spalding and the Falmouth Road Race for getting us all together today. Um, great video. You know, I felt at times uh, I was right behind Herman. So that's a good feeling. <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think, Craig, you uh, certainly uh, described the course beautifully. It's very challenging. And uh, it was my first experience with able bodied runners. And it really made a big difference and changed my life. I was a kid doing the race today. I still feel like a kid. So, yeah. Thank you all. Fantastic. So awesome. good, Bill. We're glad to have you. Thanks so much. Um, How about um, prior to the race, we were we were hoping to chat with Jaden, Jaden Mavold, uh, but ran out of a little bit of time. I don't know if Jaden's still with us, wants to Hi. talk a little bit about it. Hey, how was the experience for you? Oh, it was awesome. Um, and so cool to be able to push along some of the, some of the best wheelchair races in the world and learn from them. Yep. So you're yeah, tuning, what time is it where you're at today? It's about 10 past three in the morning. Okay. Say what? <laughs> You're coming in from New Zealand, huh? Yeah. Incredible, yeah. Jaden. <laughs> I did the Boston Marathon, and that was at 3, 3 a.m. as well. And I also did uh, a Spokane event, and that was about 1.30, 1 o'clock in the morning. So I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting used to getting up really early. Yeah. That's good. What, uh, how long have you been racing, and how old are you? Um, I'm 16. I've been racing for about 18 months. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I was a competitive competitive swimmer for about five five years, and then like um, it didn't really work out. The classification system wasn't that good. So I tried racing out, and I absolutely loved it. So I fell in love with it, and I've done it ever since. Fantastic, dude! Welcome to Falmouth. Hope hopefully we'll see you in person one of these years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd be thank amazing you. come make a trip to the cape yeah well thank you <laughs> fantastic how about you matt davis i know you've done this race many times 
you want to come off of mute and tell us just kind of a little bit about your experience here being on the virtual and joining us virtually are you able to get to the mute oh boy that's going to be harder than the race there we there go <laughs> are we good yeah oh, loud and clear stretching there you know it's really uh challenging doing this uh whole remote thing with having to climb up the telephone pole to switch the router on so here in kentucky <laughs> That there are no injuries incurred. <laughs> I, would be, I would be remiss if I didn't mention all these years that I did it, all the things that Lucia did for us over the years. Yes. Um, what a great person that helped me get started when I first did my first round with Falmouth Road Race. And of course, all the things that Matt's done and all the other volunteers, it wouldn't be possible without them. So I wanted to say thanks. Incredible. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. And uh, in addition, Paula Warren, who <laughs> ran and helped out right. with shuttle service all those years. Yeah. So thank for thinking about you too. Thank you, Matt, for for bringing that attention. Uh, we let's talk to uh, some of our champions. Actually, uh, Tatiana, what was that like? Because um, you visualize yourself kind of going through the course, and and you were kind of seeing yourself almost. It's like you were racing with yourself the whole way. What was that like for you? <laughs> Yeah, this is, um, I really actually enjoy doing these virtual races. And I think it's a great way for all of us to come together and be a community again. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the pandemic has been hard for everyone. So I think this kind of gave, you know, a fresh of breath air for all of us to see each other, to see how we're doing. And mm -hmm. Greg, you did a great job with the course. <laughs> um, it was beautiful. Um, so it really kind of made me actually feel like I was there um, during the race and I love it and I really enjoyed it. Um, it's, it feels good to, well, race again. Um, mm -hmm. And it was, yeah, it kind of made me go back through the memories and look really looking forward to, to next year and being back at Falmouth. Yeah. Mm. So good. <laughs> Thanks, so Chad. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we are going to, um, uh, uh, Matt, we want to toss it over to Matt. Matt, do you have any of the uh, questions, uh, maybe from Facebook Live that uh, folks had that we could possibly answer there? And then we're going to get to our raffle. Absolutely. Yeah. So there was uh, one question that I saw on Facebook Live, actually, um, was basically just um, the importance of drinking water, because obviously it's, uh, you know, drinking water for, you know, you guys with your gloves on and whatnot, uh, how um, is that possible? And uh, is it important for you to drink enough water on the course? That was the question that was on Facebook Live. Yeah, you, sure. You want to take that? Sure. Yeah, great question. So, you know, clearly it's a little different than if you're running the race. Um, most of the athletes have on gloves, as we were describing, and you're in that sort of tucked position uh, so that you can get the best aerodynamics and the best um, performance uh, from your stroke. Uh, what most athletes do is have some type of water system that's sort of tucked into their chair, something like a camelback, um, and they'll take the hose of the camelback and kind of route it up through so that it's accessible um, via just sort of tilting your head down a little bit and you can take a quick sip whenever you need one. Um, that way you can get a drink here and there without having to stop pushing or without interrupting um, your race. So our athletes clearly, you know, don't typically stop at the watering stations, but they carry a small supply of water with them. You know, a race that's around seven miles, typically you don't need a ton, um, but a little bit certainly healthy and helpful to have. Yeah. One of the things for, for folks, um, I've talked to people that, that volunteer at the water stations. And um, I just want to apologize <laughs> for all of the wheelchair racers. We love you and we're glad you're there and we're not ignoring you, but the water on the gloves do not mix. So that's well. why we <laughs> blow right past you. <laughs> that's right. Any other questions, Matt? Uh, that is it. Okay. Fantastic. Good. Well, fantastic. This has been a uh, really a one of a kind um, experience for me. And uh, I love um, um, I love kind of coming back. Well, Falmouth is just such a fantastic memory for me. I, I, I've I've been doing Falmouth since 1990 or something. And, and it's just uh, a race I've always come back to and and a race that I brought my family to and and it's just been fantastic and so um, being able to see um, 
to see the actual course again and refresh that my in my memory and it kind of gave me goosebumps on some of those sections because mm -hmm. of just the amazing memory uh, of being there and so we're going to move on into our uh, raffle prize uh, today. So I want to uh, introduce Matt uh, Kinesella. He is the Adaptive Athletes Program Manager of the New Balance Falmouth Road Race. So welcome, Matt. Hey, yeah, thanks. Uh, so all these wheelchair athletes have heard from me. Um, they, they're the, I'm the point of contact. Uh, so hello again, everybody. Um, um, so we've got some great raffle prizes today. Um, so we have uh, six different gift or six gift cards from how i roll sports so they're wonderful to work with um basically we offered up to buy some gift cards and they say you know what? we'll match it so we have two gift cards at the 50 dollar denomination two gift cards at the 100 dollar denomination and two at the 200 dollars denomination they um how i roll sports if you're not familiar um it's a company that has adaptive sports equipment for adaptive athletes they offer wheelchairs and parts tires a variety of things that all wheelchair participants could use um, so, um, and I also wanted to mention, if you do not win a gift card in your virtual gift bag, there is a coupon for how I roll sports It's $10 off when you spend $50 when you use the promo code Falmouth at the checkout. So here we go with the raffle. I am using my race mug, um, and I am going to pick some names here. So we're going to start off with the $50 denominations. We'll go up from there and then we'll do the VIP Falmouth package. I'll, rem I'll remind everybody what that is in a second. So the first $50 one, uh, Shandy Oliver, you won the first $50 one. So congrats, Shandy. Here to go, Shandy. All right, second $50 gift card goes to Jason Robinson. There you go, Jason. Way to go, way to go. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> All right, first $100 denomination gift card goes to Will Lear. Right. Yay. Some <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for You're joining us today. <laughs> All right. The second $100 denomination comes to a newcomer to Falmouth, Delmas Mayo. Good job, hey, Delmas. Delmas. Thanks for joining us today. All right. Now we go to the big ones, the $200. Here we go. John Boy Smith, you got two hundred dollars. Hey, right, John Boy. Like... Whoa! How well, that was a surprise. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. And our final gift card goes to a good friend of mine who shares the same name as me, Matt Davis. <laughs> Second two hundred dollar denomination. Dun, da, da. Nice. All right. Now, for the grand prize, this is a big one. So we have a VIP Falmouth experience. So for the next Falmouth road race that happens, you will, the winner of this will be, have a guaranteed entry into the wheelchair division. You will have travel reimbursement up to $750. And you will um, have a three night hotel stay in Falmouth, um, VIP finish line tent tickets, VIP post race party tickets, which is one of my favorite parts of the race. Um, and I know a lot of other people too. And um, a $50 gift card to one of the Falmouth restaurants. So as we are doing, I am putting all the names back in for this final raffle. You have a chance to win it. So I'm going to shake it up nice and good because I want to make sure that it's fair and go deep into the bottom. And we have a second time winner in this. It is Will Lear. Hey. Look at that. Ooh. Lightning strikes twice on this raffle. <laughs> nice. All right. 2021. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you all for joining us today. You made this event awesome. People on Facebook are loving it. This is awesome. Um, I hope I can see everybody in person next year. Um, I'd much rather that, but this is the next best thing. Thank you all for joining us in this Falmouth virtual at home edition uh, presented by Spalding Rehabilitation Cape Cod. Thank you all for that. Thank yeah. you.
Well, one, uh, one thing here is just as we're finishing up too, for those of you that have joined us today that are interested, uh, we I know all of you have rollers. And if you want to stay part of community, I know Tatiana said it's just, it's hard to stay connected in, in, on community. And so uh, we do have the Low Roller Club uh, that meets uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And uh, uh, this is kind of a, 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 a video. This was the Peachtree Road Race simulation. Saul Mendoza joined us and Cody, uh, Jim Martinson, a lot of people, Pam Fontaine, number of people here that have joined us. And um, I will put in the chat window again, and I'll post this on the Falmouth um, page. But you guys are welcome to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 a.m. Pacific, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern. And we ride for an hour, three days a week. And so you guys are more than welcome to continue the community and join us. And uh, it's been such an honor. Thank you so much, uh, Sherry, uh, co-hosting this. It's been a pleasure uh, to join and uh, to do this kind of, it's the first time I've done something like this uh, ever. What did you think about this today? What do you got to say? I loved it. What a great yeah. way to start a Sunday. Um, and, you know, just so fantastic to see so many both new and old friends from the wheelchair racing community, um, you know, to, to have the chance to work with you, Craig, and all of the great um, leadership at the Falmouth Road Race. Um, just really incredible experience. And also want to, again, reiterate our thanks to the sponsors. So How I Roll Sports, um, Spalding Rehab, of course, and the New Balance Falmouth Road Race team. So I, I think pretty incredible. And of course, we all Hope to be together again in person in 2021, but um, man, I think we really, you know, blew it out of the water with what we could do virtually this year in 2020. Mm -hmm. That's Pat. perfect. All right. So uh, on behalf of Sherry, Matt, the whole racing organization, Falmouth Road Race, all these years of amazing sauce, uh, we are going to say goodbye to you and we will see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thank for you. Us. Thank everybody. you so much. Bye, guys. Thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys.